for this top i have my front and base and back basic bodies and i'll be extending the neckline by 0 0.5 0 0.75 just as seen you could actually use an inch to your choice now i want to blend this line down th that point down to the shoulder slant line and i don't want this top to be um, tapered i want it to be free on the body so i would make an adjustment so that the bust line becomes equal with the waist line and then i make my um, hem line on my edge and then i go ahead to cut the problem with high neck um, dresses is that the the only problem is actually how to get into them so for me i decided to make a keyhole and at the top of that keyhole i'm going to be attaching a button so that will be my ease what i'll be using for the ease that is to get into the dress and then the same thing i did for the back bodies i'm going to do same for the front bodies Now you notice that the neckline just goes straight instead of curved as it normally is but by the time we're done you wouldn't actually tell if I used a curve or it wouldn't actually show or it wouldn't count alright. So now I go up again by the same um, number of measurements I used on the back and I'll connect with the line. And then I'll blend, just same as I did for the back. I'll blend to the shoulder slope. So there we have our high neck line. Now you have to decide where you want your drape lines to stop. Alright, so some people start from the shoulder and from the middle of the armhole or from the bust line. Alright. So for me, I'll mark 10. I don't want mine to exit 10. And I'll randomly mark drape lines down and make sure it doesn't exceed the 10 inches. If you want yours to go down, even down to the bust point or to the waist, creativity at its peak is... Um, it's okay, I don't know what to say, but then it wouldn't be bad. It's your choice. So um, I labeled and I and I slashed through. Notice that I didn't cut everything entirely. So you can actually cut on bias. That is, place on bias on your fabric. All right. But since this fabric wouldn't be enough, if you have enough fabric and all of that, you can surely do so. But for me, I would be placing on bias. So as you know this is the front piece so i'll fold into two that is i'm placing on fold so you need to make sure that you have some some um uh, some like some fabric left under for your folding allowance or your hemming allowance or what but this is actually a scrap fabric so i didn't want to throw it away so i just decided to use it for this right so i began to pin I pinned the base, that is that part where I didn't slash, I pinned to the fabric first. And then you want to determine the distance you want in between the slashed pieces. So you could actually use 2, 2.5. As you see, this fabric isn't that much. So I'll just be using an inch. So for you, you could use um an inch and half or 1.75 two inches as i as i just said so it's your choice but for me i'll be using one inch as the distance between the four sections the four um sections of paper that i slashed
When you're done pinning to your fabric, you start to trace out your sewing allowance, whatever sewing allowance you use while sewing, you start to trace out. And if you didn't add um, ease on your basic bodies, that is while well drafting, then you can also add your ease and sewing allowance, right? And then I'm going to draw a line straight from this point to the other point, not minding that um, it didn't um, complete. You see, this part is left. So that place is not needed. Never, don't bother about it. So we only need a straight line. So we'll complete that line because it was covered by a paper earlier. Okay, fortunately for me, I have some fabric left, some inches. So I'll simply um, fold it in. I'll be using that part for the facing. I'll be hemming it with my hand that is inside and it will be my facing so i'll simply pin together so that when i cut it will be it will be equal um you can actually check out my hemming um tutorial video so i have a video on that on this channel so you, you can check it out After cutting, I simply turn over and trim um, that part because it wasn't equal. That is that part of the facing. So I trimmed it a bit. And then I'm going to notch um, the midpoint that is between the facing and the main um, fabric. So I remove the pins and place these um together probably selective together for use later so this is a front piece i will keep out at aside so this is the back bodies which i've already cut cut i cut on i cut open because the fabric wasn't enough as i said earlier so i cut open well this is me making the facing for the keyhole that i have at the back at the back bodies so I hope what I'm doing is clear and self-explanatory. So I'll place the the facing right sides facing right sides. I'll do same on both of them, and I'm going to um, make a stitch right on top. So I've made the stitch. I'll go ahead to notch so that everything will. Um, get flattened and rest well. Go ahead to flip over the facing to the back side, and then I'm going to iron. So I'm done ironing, and before I go further, I'd simply um, I want to add um, this piece that is it is going to hold the button so i want to add this piece to it so i'll simply mark where i want to be inside the fabric and place it in between the facing and the main fabric and i'm going to sew together
and now I want to the facing I have already out fold and iron and if you have the time you could actually hem but for me since the the light supply electric supply isn't i don't have all the time so i simply had to sew on it so that's my front pattern and then i'm simply going to join the shoulder together and pin since it's certain it, it can get really slippery so i had to pin together so I pinned the both um, shoulder slopes and also the same for this other side. And I so mentioned that you should hem the neckline of the back bodies and also the uh, join the back. But if your if yours is placed on full then there's no need for joining at the back. So I joined the seam, that's the side seams, and this is it on my body so that's just it